Let me ponder at you a question. How long does it take to master something? How long do you have to practice writing or gymnastics or Mandarin or cooking before you're considered the best at it? Let me ask you another question. Is it worth becoming the best? What are the results you're looking for? Well, someone who's been playing cello for a year will probably be beaten in a cello off by someone who's been playing their entire life. But to an untrained peon like me, that year-long celloist sounds really damn good. That means you could probably be really damn good at something within the space of a year. There's a lot of figures out there for how long it takes to master something. There's an ancient scroll from the Year of Our Lord 1993 titled The Role of Deliberate Practice in the Acquisition of Expert Talent by Anders Ericsson, which cites it takes somewhere around 10,000 hours before you are a master at something. Which, if you break that down, that's four hours a day for five days a week for nine years. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm more looking at this other figure that seems to pop up in a lot of places in our life, the 80-20 rule. And that says that 80% of your results come from 20% of the effort. It means I can get pretty damn good at whatever I want, usually within the space of a year. You can learn some fundamentals, you can build on those, and you get like really good at something in a, in a pretty short time, at least relatively short to that 20 hours a week for nine years figure. After that year, if you've been practicing consistently, to most people now, you are an expert in that topic. Or at least, hella tight. <laughs> so stupid. One of the best examples I can think of is this uh, video from the YouTube channel Violin Newbie. Uh, they show their progress over two years of practicing from brand new, barely started violin to two years of consistent practice. Now, the first few months, absolute train wrecks. and this isn't a uh, hit on their talent or anything like that because by the end of the first year, they actually sound like really, really good. And there is a little bit of noticeable change from the end of year one to the end of year two because these sound absolutely amazing by the end of year two. But that one year of change shows like you can get really good at something within the space of that year. Now, I gotta say this does depend on the complexity of the skill being learned. You can get really good at chess, or the last example I mentioned was violin. But to become a chess grandmaster, that requires thousands of hours of practice until the skill is almost unconscious, you don't even have to think about it. But I believe in the majority of cases that grand year of practice will bring you like within the 95 to 99th percentile of all people in this skill. You can become conversational in almost any language by learning a few thousand of the most common words in it and practicing that for a year. You can become an amazing cook by learning a lot of the basic techniques and how flavors interact with each other. And for practice, well, you eat three meals a day. As someone who eats every single day, that's practice every single day. And as someone who has 10,000 hours of talking out their ass, this is my expert opinion. You trust me. So that's where our year of mastery comes in. Over the course of a year on each of several topics, I'll be going over the techniques, practices, the knowledge, the expertise that is needed to master one of these topics. Uh, after the dumpster fire that was 2020, um, we are starting in the year 2021, and the topics I will be doing this year is content marketing, uh, goal setting and achieving, and uh, clean eating. Um, I wanted to do something with Airsoft, but given that people are still coughing on each other, making each other sick, I think it's the best idea to wait on that one. So this year I'll probably be focusing on putting out a few channel or a few YouTube videos for my gaming channel um, because I have a friend that wants to do some stuff with me and I enjoy his company. So let's get to it. In the meantime, let me provide you some advice so you can do your own year of mastery so you can get really, really good at something within the space of a year. So number one, find a mentor. 
So find someone who's been through this already. Find someone who has been through what you want to learn or is a master already at what you want to learn. This person has made all the rookie mistakes that you know you would probably make otherwise. They can give you advice on avoiding those mistakes and if you do make the mistakes, they'll point it out for you. They can give you the best techniques. They can offer you great advice. They've been through all of this before. They can fast track you to getting better at this thing. Now, a mentor or a coach or whatever doesn't have to be one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to sit down with someone and say, hey, how do I do this? How do I do this? What's the best way? Blah, blah, blah. The edge of information is upon us. There's plenty to be had. You can find seminars live or pre-recorded. You can find books on the topic. You can get courses. There is a lot of information out there and there's a lot of free information out there too. However, you need to avoid information overload, which is our next tip. Number two, information overload is a hell of a tip. Well, Jay, this contradicts the last tip that you told us about finding all this information. Shut up and listen. Lots of people are scared to do anything unless you know everything about that thing. You won't know everything, trust. It's really easy to get stuck in a loop where you're just finding that next little bit of information and then never acting on it. Perfectionism is a bitch and wanting to do everything just right will prevent you from doing anything just at all. Now I'm not saying don't approve, don't aim for new heights because getting better is important as well. Uh, but you ain't going nowhere unless you're going somewhere, you know? So we find a mentor from step one, take what they're saying and put it into effect, which is our next tip. Tip number three. You gotta practice. All the information in the world don't mean squat unless you actually sit down and do the thing. I enjoy making these videos. I enjoy sitting down and reading research. I enjoy writing the scripts. I enjoy injecting humor into them like water into an egg. But all that research don't mean shit unless I sit down with a pen and paper and write a script and then vomit some words into the camera. You need to do what you actually want to master. You need to practice what you actually want to master. Deliberate hard, just outside of your comfort zone, practice with preferably as little distraction as possible. To do this, let's draw from two concepts here. The first is the aforementioned paper by Anders Eriks on deliberate practice. And the second comes from Cal Newport's book, Deep Work. Cal Newport recommends that you work in a focused manner. You have as little distraction in your environment as possible. The phone and notifications are turned off you are in an environment where nobody's going to bother you. You don't have a TV on in that room. You have maybe a pair of noise canceling headphones. So that if there are any noises around you, they don't distract you. You're able to focus on what you want to focus on. If you're working on a laptop, all the programs that may be running in the background are turned off so that they're not also commanding your attention. You need to be in an environment where you are not distracted and you can focus on what you want to focus on. When I do my writing, I've got a laptop that I sit on and I focus on my writing itself. I don't have any apps open in the background. I have no social media accounts open that are commanding my attention. I'm able to just focus on writing. And usually I don't even like taking a laptop. I like just taking a notebook and a pen and going out and getting some Starbucks or getting some boba, putting my headphones on and just focus on writing for a couple hours. Finally, once you are ready to practice what you want to practice, you need to do it deliberately. So when you're practicing, are there things that you're failing at that you can improve? Are there little things that you're messing up that you can get better at? Are you practicing new things that are just outside your comfort zone so that you can get better at what you want to practice? I can learn Mary Had a Little Lamb on just about any instrument pretty easily, but how does that help me master that instrument if that's the only song I ever play? I can shoot these videos all day, but if I'm not improving my writing, my editing, my delivery, my humor, my the information that I deliver, how are these videos getting any better? If I'm practicing cooking, if I am just making scrambled eggs every single time I cook, and you know, maybe my goal is to become the best in the world at making scrambled eggs. <laughs> eggs. But if that's the only thing that I'm making, I'm not getting better at any other technique when I'm cooking. I'm not getting better at anything else when I'm cooking. And how is that helping me? Your practice has to be deliberate, focused, and reaching for new heights. Tip number four, you have to practice the fundamentals. Get the fundamentals down, and then you can build on those. 
What are some ways to find out the fundamentals? Well, you could find the books for Dummies or iDort series. You can look up, you know, on YouTube, how to content market 101, how to play violin 101, these basic techniques. You can ask your mentor. There are a lot of ways that you can find out what fundamentals you need to focus on. And then once you've mastered those fundamentals, you can get good. Build on those fundamentals. Expand your knowledge base. Expand your experience base. So for something like violin, uh, I, I'm not an expert on playing violin. I'm really bad at it, but there's a bunch of things I can name just off the top of my head that are basics for the violin. So you have to know how to tune the violin. You have to know how to maintain the violin. You have to know how to maintain your bow. You have to know how to rosin your bow. You have to know where your fingers are held on the fretboard to produce different notes. And you know, maybe it's not called a fretboard. If it's not, go ahead and leave an angry comment down in the comment section. We could talk about it there. You stupid fuck, it's called wooden folio. You have to know how to draw your bow across the string to produce a long, steady note. There's a lot that you need to know about a violin. Those are just the basics before you can build on it and get better. So you have to learn the fundamentals first. For cooking, there is an entire huge list of fundamentals that you have to learn. But again, just off the top of my head, pot maintenance. Utensil maintenance, how to sear something, how to start barbecue, how to light hole, how to uh how to see the steak, how to see the corn, how to see the how to see how long to make the corn, how to make sauce, how to make sauce, how to make broth, how to make ramen, how to uh run that how to make it, different altitudes, cooking. To be really good at darts, the fundamentals, you have to throw sharp things. Tip number five. If you have a complex task that's part of whatever you want to learn, break it down into simple steps. So let's take a golf swing, for example. That entire thing. I have, I think I've hit a golf ball once in my life with the whole overhead swing down, all right? It's a complex technique, but it can be broken down into really easy steps. Something like knees together, elbows together, back straight, head up, you know, arms down. <laughs> There's a lot of things you could do. And then you take the entire thing, you swing it up, and then you bring it down and follow through and destroy that light anyways. Tip number six, if you can, record your progress. So take a journal or maybe video every time that you do this thing that you're practicing and see how far you've come today. So, you know, you, you might write down in your journal, today toast tasted like this. Or you, if you're picking up guitar, Record yourself the first time you ever play. Record yourself a week later. Record yourself a month later. Continue to do that, and then you can go back and look at the first video you ever did. You can look at the first few videos you ever did, and you could see your progress. You could see you're actually getting better at this because of the practice that you're putting in. And this is a great motivator to keep going. So those are some tips for learning to get really good at something within the space of a year. Um, in 2021, I've already told you the things that I want to focus on, but future years of mastery might include things like barbecue, bartending, skin care, hair care, beard care, uh, fashion, um, prototyping and electronics design, language learning, copywriting. There's a lot of things that I want to learn. And if I break it down and say, okay, I'm going to focus on like these two or three things this year. Uh, then I will get a lot further than if like, hey, I want to do 10 things and I'm going to get really good at them all and then just flounder and be really, really upset that I didn't learn anything from any of those things that year. So there you have it. I've given you several tips on how to get really good at something within the space of a year. And at the end of that year, if you decide that you want to continue with this skill or continue with whatever and actually go on to master it, become one of those world-class, you know, top 0.0001% of all people, then you can, at that point, continue on with, with whatever you want to learn. Is there anything that you're looking to, to master this year? If there is, go ahead and comment down in the comment section. We'll talk about it. Let me see how far you've come, how far you want to go, and uh, at what you've learned along the way. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you have, good. <laughs> Enjoy. Thanks.